We're back. Hey. Hey, it's <laughs> been a wonderful holiday break. It really has. It feels funny saying holiday break now because it's the middle of January and I feel like Christmas was six months ago. Mm-hmm. Right now we're recording this on the 14th of January. You're going to hear it on the 15th. How did, like, I feel like, where did January go? It's gone. Already. It's I don't gone. Even, I don't know anymore. It's gone, everybody. Welcome to the short score. This is Caitlin and Chelsea here um, in, our, in the Team Ripping Journal office. We are working on our, we're busy on our March issue of the Team mm-hmm. Ripping Journal already. Um, you should probably have just received your January issue. We hold that issue, actually, so we can get all the NFR and World Series content into it. So I've been getting calls um, from people who are concerned that the post office lost their issue. No, it's just a few short days later. Um, but I'm so glad everybody wants to get the magazine that fast. That's exciting. Super exciting. Super exciting. Caitlin, where did you go this morning? I was at Colorado Children's Hospital. Mm-hmm. And we had the Colorado Children's Hospital rodeo experience. Which was awesome. We covered that in the magazine last year. I don't know if anybody flipped back through their March issue of 2018. Mm -hmm. Had some amazing pictures from it. But you got to go and just kind of experience it today. Yeah, I hung out. I got a, if you're on our Snapchat, Team Rep Journal Snapchat or Instagram, there's a bunch of stories. Mm -hmm. And it was just fun. I got to help kids learn how to rope. We ran some barrels and... Mm -hmm. It it was awesome. Very heartwarming. I I couldn't have asked to start my Monday any better. Yeah, I I started my Monday on conference calls. So you're welcome. I'm Thank the coolest you. best boss. You ever. are the coolest best boss. I tell <laughs> everyone that. I know. I know. I should have a name tag. Um, <laughs> Jan, our members, World Series of Team Roping members, Jan and Jason Stelmbach, they organized that. Jason is a superstar doctor. Um, I don't think that's his title, but he is a superstar <laughs> doctor involved at Colorado Children's Hospital and other, other hospitals in the Denver area. And he lives just a couple roads over from Caitlin and I, and he's amazing. And the Ellerman family, who actually, we have an episode with Jay mm-hmm. Ellerman. You can listen back to the episode with Jay. It was awesome. He's a many-time NFR qualifier. His son, Britt, daughter, Taya, um, the kind of the local team repping community really embraces this event. I love it. Jesse Miller from uh-huh. the, uh, the Western Wavelength podcast. She was also there playing yeah, music. She, she, awesome. Played all the children's songs and mm-hmm. a few country songs she Great voice. Oh, and Hila Maddox there, because that's yeah. how they rope a lot of... Josh Love was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Hila Maddox there. What a cool event. I love it. I love when the team roping community gets to do good things and kind of show off how many good people we have, because we do. We have a, a killer team of folks. Now, this is a sports podcast. This is. About the sport of team roping. So we will move on from the feel-good to the nitty-gritty of professional team roping. You can check our website. There were tons of partner swaps to start this year off. The world champs are splitting up. They talked about that in our last podcast um, from the NFR. But uh, Clay Smith is roping with Jake Long, and they went on a heater and won the Texas Circuit Finals and their first rodeo out. They hit the ground running. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Luke Brown is roping with Paul Eves. The the other world, other side of that world championship team is with Luke Brown. You can watch them. There's a lot of other cool teams. I know something that you'll be able to look for a story on our website about this, but Dustin Bird is cracking back out with Russell Cardoza. Awesome. Um, Dolly's back. I know Dustin's better half, Alicia, has been preparing Dolly to come rodeo. So here in Denver in just a week, or at the end of this week, actually, uh-huh. uh, Dustin runs both of them on the 19th, I think, here in Denver. We will get to see the Bird Cardoza team back together. Nick Sartain's back on the head side. He'll he'll be cracking out kind of later in the winter rodeos because he said he didn't even get into Denver because he didn't rodeo last year. Nick, the mm-hmm. number 12 World Series of Team Rope and Healing champion. You can see a story about the t- about that on the Team Rope and Journal's website and in your January issue. What else is going on, Caitlin? Odessa. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Odessa. Okay, so we just talked to Dustin and Corey this morning, and and, and there's a story about that on the TeamRipperJournal.com. I'm going to keep saying that over and over again. Dustin and Corey want Odessa. You know, Dustin and Corey both said they had to talk together a lot about that their NFR was not the end of their world. And Corey knows that as well as anybody. He, he made sure Dustin knew it. So they rebounded. They were 8-5 on 2, which was a little bit fast, if mm-hmm. you can imagine. And then they went... The next day, they drove home from Odessa. They loaded up the next day and drove to Chicago for the World Champion Rodeo Alliance event, the WCRA's first major event there in Chicago. And so we we definitely talked to Garrett Tanazi and Joe Mattern. They were so excited on their way home. They they called, and we have a story. (laughs) 
with them Online. on the team roping journal. <laughs> but that was that was such a cool win for them. They aren't roping together anymore, but they did qualify together at Guthrie. Um, Garrett's gonna rope with Dustin Davis this year. Joe isn't even really sure what he's gonna do, but he's got sixty two thousand five hundred dollars in his pocket to kind of play with now. He said he needed to get some more horses and kind of get some things figured out before he tries to rodeo again. But that was pretty exciting and a great win for both of them. I love Garrett's roan horse. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dirty fast. It's a mare, a daughter of a streak of fling, all thoroughbred on the bottom. So that's a cool horse. And the, and she was really, really impressive in that teeny tiny building, too. So if you didn't watch that, it's on Ride Pass. If you get a subscription to Ride Pass, you can also watch the World Series of Team Roping finale, the U.S. TRC's uh, National Finals of Team Roping. Um, and then we're going to have select U.S. and World Series events throughout the year that are going to have, uh, they're going to be streamed on Ride Pass. So I bought Ride Pass to watch the WCRA this weekend in my kitchen. Caitlin's ponying off my Ride Pass subscription. Yep. Don't watch it on my computer. <laughs> so I guess, but it's all good. Everybody, we decided we we watched the ride. Like I said, we watched Ride Pass. We watched the WCRA. We got to see the good and the bad, the kind of the growing pains that they're going through. Importantly, I got to see you know fifty thousand dollars going into every cowboy's pocket that won the event and cowgirls. Yep. which was Don't awesome. Forget the cowgirl. You know. It was really, it was really cool. There were some growing pains that mm-hmm. we noticed, and that's why I decided to call Bobby Mo today, and he is our guest on the short score. I know we don't always have a guest on the short score, but we wanted to have him on, to kind of talk about the good and the bad that happened in Chicago and and where we go from here. So, without further ado, enjoy our interview with Bobby Mo. Thank you for being interested in and coming onto the podcast today. We appreciate it. Oh, we appreciate you covering it. Oh, it's awesome. It was. It looked like you know I watched it on Ride Pass. Give me kind of your take on the ground in the arena about what went right, what went wrong, and what what you all learned. Well, well, eighty people left there with a check. Yeah, and nine of them left with a check for at least fifty thousand dollars, and a few of them won with left with more. Kyle Cabada won 67000 and Garrett Tanazi and, and his partner, they won sixty two five. So, I mean, that's that's a tremendous win for rodeo because that's all, that's all new money. That's that's all great. I think that the crowd there in Chicago was, was really entertained. They had a good time. It's it's new there. I mean, so it's any, you know, I was asking Sean Gleason, who's went into more new markets and developed events than, than anybody in our space, you know, how, how long does it take when you go into a new market like that for it to, you know, to mature and get really good? And he's like, you never go into it the first year expecting it to, to just be gangbusters. It just doesn't work that way. And so it, it was a good crowd. And I would I would expect that um, next time it would be even better. And so I mean, you just you gotta you have to kind of curb your expectations these days. People don't they're not very patient and they want to see you know instant results. And and we're 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 trying something new. And and I think that uh, some of it works really well, and some of it we need to we need to tweak and change. And so um, those were those were some of the the good things. Like it was great to see people who wouldn't normally get that that chance like you expect to see shane hanchy and trevor brazil roping it out for a big check everybody's seen that and it's fun to see because you're seeing the very very best of competition when that happens Mm -hmm. but it's also fun to see people that wouldn't get that chance you know in the barrel racing and in the breakaway roping and and you know there, there were people there were people in every event that you won't see it Odeo Houston or at Calgary because they don't, you know, they, they're not full-time rodeo people that that's all they do. And so, um, it was cool to see. I mean, it was, it was, I was loved, I loved seeing Jackie Crawford win the breakaway rope, just because she's been politely one of the loudest voices, you know, as a proponent to get breakaway in, you know, on a bigger platform in rodeo. And, you know, she's, She's a lot of the reason why we had it, and and I thought she did an excellent job. She was there all week doing doing PR all over. She was on morning shows and evening night, you know, sports shows, and she did a you know a thing during the halftime of the um, of the hockey game. And I mean, she's she was all over. She busted her tail, and uh, and I was I was really happy to see her do well at the end and win. 
So. Yeah, I watched that. We, we watched it on Ride Pass with uh, two breakaway ropers sitting in my kitchen, uh, and there was yeah. not a dry eye in the house. And I mean that. We were all just so emotional watching Jackie win that and listen to her talk with her son because that was such a mom thing to do. I loved it so much. So that was yep. special. That was really something. Well, and how much hope does that give to, you know, people who work their tail off from the, from the time they're little kids all the way through college rodeo, and then the opportunities ended. Mm-hmm. Say I got say I got him a college education, and that's awesome. But then you know they've devoted the first twenty years of their life to a craft that doesn't pay them back anymore, and that's too bad because it's a good event. Yeah. And so I hope that you know I've seen a lot of change in that event just through the course of this year, and I think. I think us adding it and it's equal money and there was never a there was never even a discussion that it wouldn't be, I think was is all positive and so, you know, part of our and, and I think I told you this last time that we spoke mm-hmm. on a on a podcast was that part of what keeps us going is if we make if we do something in the rodeo world that makes a positive change, even if we're not directly responsible for it, that's mm-hmm. in for rodeo. Yep. And so just by virtue of us being out there, if it causes a rodeo to step up and do the right thing for for its athletes, then then we win. I mean, that's that's that is our mission. So, I mean, I think that that's all great. So, um, as far as challenges or you know things that yeah. we need to get better at, so historically, rodeo there's a, a big disconnect between the live event and the and the event that's if if it has if it happens to be shown live relaying that information and and so they've you know like like a farm tech uh, electric eye doesn't go to all of the all the video boards and stuff and so PBR has developed their own timing and scoring system that that has solved that problem for them so as soon as they score a bull ride that the scores from the for the rider score and the stock score instantly come up on the screen. The fans are seeing it at the same time as the secretaries and the timers and everybody. Mm-hmm. And so it's really cool what they've developed, but their focus has been on bull riding. And so that when we come in here and we want to do rodeo, you think, well, it's just the same, but it's it's not. Mm-hmm. And so not only is it not the same, but we didn't have all the same people operating it that are accustomed to doing it. They have 28 Unleash the Beast events a year, and so they have a team who are pros. I mean, they can whip into a, a building, and it's amazing what they can do, and they run like a machine. And so then when you throw, you throw some new people into the mix that have different ground rules – that are used to doing things a different way and and it is in itself it's a different animal and that rodeo is from bull riding sure. that you, you have some kinks and so we had some we had some disconnects we had a, our timers were on a platform above the buck and shoots the announcers were at a table at the at the time of an end of the of the arena mm-hmm. and their their comms didn't didn't speak to each other Mm -hmm. the the timers had a comm that spoke to the truck and the announcers had a comm that spoke to the truck and then you had your officials on radios who could speak to the timer but because of that the the timing and scoring when it would get hung up because they use instead of instead of using judges sheets they use um like a ipad tablet Uh uh-huh when it would get hung up, then there was, you know, the backup was to go to paper. But when you go to paper, then you have to speak the results to the truck. And then the truck has to translate <laughs> it to, to the announcer. Yeah. All that's that. A challenge. <laughs> a really, a really simple solution that, that we just completely missed until it, it had started was put them all at the same table. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so when they went, before they put the dirt in, they run all the cable for all of these different stations. And so that's done before we even show up. And so it was sort of like, this is the way it's going to be set up. We just need to figure out, you know, how to make it work. And and there were a few times when it didn't work worth a dang. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the, the time on the screen, which is the same time that folks at home, when they're watching on Ride Pass, are, are, are seeing... Sometimes this time didn't stop, and sometimes it didn't stop in the right place. But 
the, the fact is they had two timers with backup times, and so they always had a legitimate time in every single case. And mm-hmm. in the barrel racing, even though Ride Pass has their own electric eyes, we had Farm Tech eyes stacked right on top of them. So, you know, even if if the Ride Pass eyes didn't work, we always would have an exact backup time so it wasn't like we ever went to hand time in the barrel race or it wasn't like we ever gotcha. you know missed it what happened was if you're watching the boards or you watch on ride pass it's like the the time that come up wasn't right mm-hmm. and then the announcer doesn't know it because he's not sitting right next to the timer yeah. so the timers are taking all this down meanwhile we're down there on the dirt just trying to run this thing off as fast as we can so that's where all the confusion live Mm -hmm. and we've had no less than eight or nine hours of meetings ourselves since then and i know that pbr and ride pass have worked really hard since then to solve all those issues and and so i know that uh next time you know the next event we do we'll have those we'll have solution it was unfortunate for anybody who thought they were you know a certain time or had a certain outcome for any amount of time longer than they should have Mm -hmm. like if they gotta wait a minute that's way too long you know and and so i but at the same time in my position you know midstream we can just only do as much as we can but our our main goal was to make sure that the right money went to the right places and so even in the case where there was a, a replay challenge it was of the utmost importance that those people got got their fair due. Mm-hmm. And that's something that doesn't happen in rodeo. I mean, there's lots of times when, and I'm not saying the officials do it intentionally, and officials always are trying to make the right call. And I wouldn't say that they ever weren't in, in any rodeo arena. But sometimes in the heat of the moment, the wrong call is made. And that's why we think instant replay is so important but it takes a it takes a minute to look at it and go back and you got to get different views and and sometimes when people watch it depending on the angle that they watch it at they think well there's no way that person should get a uh, a call overturned or a rerun or a rewrite or whatever but you have to rely on the official that's watching the replay and his job is to make sure that the right call is made yeah and you said you've had some conversations with folks that maybe were affected by some of the challenges that happened or, or were involved. I don't want to say affected, involved in some of the challenges that happened. Um, that's kind of different than professional rodeo or, or other associations because they can just pick up the phone and call you directly. That's a, it's a good thing, right? You've been able to have some good conversations, productive, hopefully constructive conversations. Yeah, I've had a lot of conversations, you know, mm-hmm. with, with people, people that were affected and people that weren't. And, you know, as long as we're able to talk about solutions, um, one thing I can't do is go back and change what happened. Yeah. And so I can't go back in time. And so the best thing I can do is is make make sure that we fix it so that it doesn't happen again. And that's that's exactly what we're what mm-hmm. we're in the process of doing. And okay. so we just got done sitting here in the office. We watched the Ride Pass broadcast, and we made notes to ourselves. You know for ourselves of things that we need to fix and adjust and the things that worked and the things that didn't. And we're probably far more critical than anybody else would be when we watch it mm-hmm. because because we want it to be the best possible event, the most level playing field as, as we can because we know that everybody – I know how hard people work to get to get to have a shot like that. And so I don't take it lightly at all, and, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to get better and – I mean, I guess that is a big difference between us and, you know, I think that the normal mindset out there is I've shared my opinion, whether it was constructive or not, with plenty of (laughs) rodeo officials and committees and directors and you name it. And and it really didn't have much of an impact. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in this case, if somebody shares their opinion and if it makes sense, or there's a solution, then we can implement it the next time. Mm-hmm. And so that doesn't mean that everybody's right, but that doesn't mean we're all right either. So, I mean, we're we're just trying to make it as good as we possibly can. Now, how have nominations been? How's the pace of nominations been? Is it growing? Is Are people kind of catching on and seeing that, um, that it's paying out big money, you think? 
Yeah, I think that it's 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 increasing. You know, it fluctuates by the by the day of the week. Like Monday is a usually a slow day, and as you get closer to you know the weekend when more of the events happen and stuff, then that then the nominations pick up. But they've you know there were a lot of them over the weekend, mm-hmm. um, which is positive. Which makes me think that a lot of people you know are starting to realize the the opportunity. But you know, for this thing. For this thing to work in the long run requires people to to do it. I mean, you can't you can't write a million and a half dollars worth of checks several times a year and not have people you know really participate. But yeah. we're up for the challenge, and we're we are uh, always trying to find ways to get to make it better and get more people involved. We feel like in this current segment, we came up with some some new opportunities with the Lewis Field Bulls and Bronx event that. You know, 12 guys are going to go at a 15,000 added per event one night riding with no entry fees mm-hmm. and have a chance to qualify straight to days of 47 with that. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a good opportunity for people in the riding events. And then we have one thing that we came up with that I think will be neat, especially when people start to figure it out, is, is a quarterfinals. And so last year in the semifinals we we said we we're going to go 150 deep well that's that's too deep for a couple reasons and, and one of one of the reasons is is that is that the person who maybe likely qualifies at at you know 120th or 100th might not be used to or might not be able to compete against the person who qualifies inside the top 10 mm-hmm. and so in a way to try to try to tear it we've developed this quarterfinals which will be 51 through 100 in the leaderboard and those people will be able to compete amongst themselves without having to beat all the top guys and gals and have an opportunity to one to qualify directly to days of 47 and if they do well there if they place qualify straight to the semifinals which will give them some momentum it happens in the western united states which you know was is a result of some people you know kind of saying Guthrie's too far from us and we live in the West, it'll give them, you know, some momentum and give them some money along the way. And so we hope that that goes well, and there's 120000 up there. So, I mean, that's nothing to, nothing yeah, to joke sure. about. You know, two rounds and an average, you can show up one day and, and do your thing in the timed events and, and go on to the next one and win some pretty good money. And if you do well, you know, even if you're just a part-time, you know, rodeo person, you can do well, and you can move on to the semifinals. Very cool. And when do you expect that to be? Do you have any of those details hammered out, Bob? Yeah, that is uh, that is May 2nd through the 4th in Heber City, Utah. In Heber City, okay. And then the next uh, big event is following that. Tell me tell me where they go from yeah, there. So then the, so then the semifinals in Guthrie mm-hmm. will be the 15th through the 19th of May. Mm-hmm. And then the major will be... June first in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Well, I asked um, Garrett when I spoke with him. I said he when he said Green Bay. I said, "Is is that like at the football stadium? Where where in Green Bay? That's exciting." It's in, it's in the rec center, which is not not very far from the football stadium. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, he had yeah. said. Garrett said, "Well, if there was if it was in the football stadium, there was no way Charlie Crawford wasn't going to be there." But he said he'd be fighting folks to get there. I told but. Charlie that we would waive the dress code for him so he could wear a cheese <laughs> cheese head hat. <laughs> Good. Good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> well, that's awesome, Bob. I, I appreciate your time very much. Thank you so much. And I'm glad I'm glad we could talk about this because I know in our community people talk about everything and, and I like to have everything above board and on and so we all can be on the same page about what's going on and what changes we're all making to make it all better. So You bet. It's well, ex- I appreciate it. And like like I was talking about earlier, I mean you, you just don't want to discount the, the fact that there's millions of dollars of new money being put into rodeo right now and the fact that we're trying new things basically means that some of it works perfectly and some of it needs to be tweaked and adjusted but at least we're out there trying it and we're putting up the money and you know we want nothing more than to make it as as good as possible and we'll keep won't quit working until we get it there i agree no i i I was standing um standing around at the western market show this past weekend with jd yates and and folks were talking about how it all went, and he said, at the end of the day, $50,000 went into a cowboy's pocket. 
and you know, and that was just in the team roping, and, and God knows it was more than that actually in the team roping. But that was the the veterans takeaway in that situation. So yeah, um, yeah, I think that was awesome. Yeah, very cool. And a guy like him could qualify for it just doing what he's doing. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And that's I, another cool thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. and. JD, you know, you know JD, he could crack out and make the NFR if he wanted to too bad. But yeah, oh, yeah. he could certainly do it. He could certainly make the WCRA semifinals and, and the major by any chance he got. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank All you, Bob. Right. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. We'll talk to you later. Talk Bye-bye. to you later. Bye. All right. Thanks, Bobby. I'm so glad we had him on. That, that was very helpful. Mm-hmm. And nice to know when people are making changes. And nice that. That it all happened the way it's it did. It's good to clarify yeah. everything. Good to clarify everything. Like I said, I, I like anytime anything goes on, I'm glad that we can talk about it. This is a really great forum for that. All right. On to what has been going on in the World Series in the USTRC. Uh, rodeo might be a little bit slow, but team roping is not. So as far as the World Series goes, we kind of did just a big, broad overview of some big things that happened while we were gone. Clayton Biglow, the NFR bareback rider, he won the 11 in Chowchilla with Daniel Rice. Jimmy Joe Montera, who's... A superhero. I, peop, I mean, people should know her name. Yeah, I think I think y'all I think y'all know her. She's a little bit my superhero, that's for sure. She won two ropings at the Torrington World Series. She won one with Tad Lassingame. She won the fourteen with Blaster and the thirteen with her husband Rick. So that was cool. Another somebody who double dipped. The Ten Heartland was two weekends ago in Queen Creek, Arizona. Hayden Udall and Garrett Casterton won that one. They won. 14200 bucks for that, so that was awesome. And then the 14... 14 and the 12 slide in Clovis, Matthews Land Cattle, uh, Michael Benavides. He won with Cutter McLean in the 14 and won with Corey McConnell in the 12 slide. That's awesome. Double mm-hmm. did. Oh, who won the... Um, we're talking jackpots now. Who won the Odessa jackpot? Oh, Cody Snow and Wesley Thorpe. Mm-hmm. So throwing a little... That's awesome. Yeah, throwing a little pro stuff in there at the end. But, yes, I forgot that they, they did win that jackpot. That's always a good one. I mean, they have an American qualifier, too, and I think Lane Ivey and Ryan Motes won mm-hmm. the American qualifier. I believe so. Yeah, so very cool. Lots going on. Um, this is a not a short episode of the short score. Just a fun. We wanted it to be long for the first one back, right? Yeah, we have so much to tell you guys. <laughs> I don't. Th- I'm, I'm never going to take a three-week break again. No. We have lots and lots Everything to share. Everything piles up. It does pile up. And, you know, gosh, if you go to, our, like, I keep saying this, go to our <laughs> website. Because if, if if maybe you get most of your team roping news from the short score, you are missing out. Because we've got stories about horse purchases. Uh, we've got stories about horses that have passed on. We've got stories about every rodeo and jackpot from here to New Mexico to Texas to Florida, wherever. We're going to have it. So make sure you're checking it out. We will be busy mm-hmm. keeping it all up to date for you. And in the meantime, enjoy your magazine, enjoy your January issue that I think, based on emails that I'm getting about people being excited about different articles, which is awesome, I think you probably all have received it now. So, awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, We will have an episode of The Score this week. Uh, Stay tuned to social media to find out who it's going to be.